Peace and blessings, everyone. Hi, and welcome back to See Your Soul 3 Revolution with me, Lise. This is going to be a general collective message for the collective. Um, first and foremost, happy birthday, Taurus. I haven't forgotten. Um, you will be next. And I just wanted to say, just take a couple minutes to say to my collective, hi, guys. I haven't forgotten. Um, I went on a like a freedom festival that I go to every year, really far away, whether it's all in nature, it's woods, and, you know, it's a campground, and it's huge, and a lot of people congregate there, and so I did bring my laptop, I did get a video up the first day, and then um, I realized that um, I didn't bring my laptop cord. For whatever reason, I packed everything but that, so, and when I went to go, like, make the videos on my phone for whatever reason it wasn't I don't know what it was it just wasn't working at um, like the internet but also like it's just the area I tried my mobile hotspot which was really hard to do with your own phone you can't really do that I tried on the internet I tried I even bought anyway it was just an epic fail and the service was just next time I'll plan this is something that I do every year um, you know it was a great getaway though my son came we had for the whole week I had a friend and his dad came too and you know they stayed for practically the whole week and it's just really nice you know um, I like that I don't have to separate anymore um, my social life from my private life or my family life right it's like if I can't bring my kid around you I don't want to be hanging out with you it's like that you know um, I saw things from a very different perspective, too. So I've been going to this this spot for about six years now, right? And so you meet people along the way and things like that. But there was just so much growth that I had learned about myself that I saw when I was there. It's like, wow. There were so many times that, like, I felt so... Um, like I had put people on pedestals because I felt this way or that way. Really, it was a lack of self-love for myself and that I didn't have a lot of confidence in myself. So I put people on pedestals and I, you know, um, was a people pleaser my whole life. So practically, so I, um, you know, didn't want to create any, you know, social arguments or anything like that. You know, like I just, it was just so nice to be free and be like, I don't fuck with you. I didn't have to say that. I just knew it. My energy, my presence spoken up right and it everything was just so peaceful I there was not one ounce of drama like I didn't allow myself to get pulled into drama there were some things that happened but had nothing to do with me and so um it was just a very relaxing week perfect like just ah oh, it was just really great the I mean I missed you guys a lot I'll tell you that and readings weren't the same. I did do some reads while I was there, um, you know, like vending and stuff. And the, 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 the faces on and the feedback that I got from those people was just more than I ever would have hoped for, right? Like they really were understanding. And all a good reader is really is we're in a healer. We're just helping others to see the potential and see what they have in themselves. That's all. It's our higher consciousness reaching out to their higher conscious, to their subconscious, right? It's our subconscious higher self, however, reaching out to their higher self and then they communicate and we channel that and we just kind of say what people need to hear, right? Maybe if they don't want to, but they need to. And most times when people are coming to a reader, they're looking for help. They're looking for something. They're searching for something. So that's why it's so important to always be an honest reader. And it's just about communication too and explaining. And, you know, I had a, it was a really good experience too for me. Um, and that's about all I have to say on that. I also, I met another reader there. I met a few and um, I got a couple Oracle decks that were blessed with her beautiful energy, a great deal too. So we're gonna use one of those Oracle decks today. It's like um, a vintage deck, it's very beautiful. Um, we're gonna start that off collective, we're gonna see what the read's about, and then we'll hop in and see where, the, where it takes us, okay? So we'll go, uh, we'll start now. Spirit, are you here? Spirit is here. Angels, ancestors, guides. 
please protect me as I go through the Tarot, Ether, and Oracle. Only that in which is for my collectives. Highest and best good may come through. No negative energy sent my way to my channel or my collective in any way, shape, form, or fashion. I rebuke it and refuse it. I call on for extra protection to Archangel Michael. Please come through. Provide me with some extra protection. Do not allow any lower vibrations to sneak in this plane at, at, in any way, shape, form, or fashion. This is a holy space and I put protection six feet around on every side um, nothing of malice or evil intent may enter only that in which is for unconditional love and light may come through no trickster energy nothing I feel some energy trying to get through I'm not allowing it all right collective let's see what the reads going to be about and then we'll dive into the tarot but let's see what what this has to say Show me spirit for my beautiful collective for June 20, June 26th, 2023. Show me what the read's going to be about for the collective. What is the, ooh. Look, guys, you have protection. Isn't this beautiful? This card is so, you have protection. This gives me like the star, like, this gives me like, it's like, uh, I know it's an Oracle deck, but I get like the star. Um, like in the Tarot, I get Aqua vibes because, you know, that's protection. That's spiritual protection, too. Let's see. Oh, Spirit said that's it for now. So we have protection. It came out first and then gratitude. Spirit is saying to go with this now and then to open up with the Tarot if I have questions. I want to read from the book. Protection. So the overall energy is gratitude, but the first card that came out was protection. So let's read from, I thought I had it. What's going on here? Oh, here we go. Protection. This statuesque warrior goddess stands on the threshold between two worlds. Above her head, a halo shows the divine consciousness. As she guards the mysterious kingdom behind the portal, a golden sword implies readiness for action. The creation of the sword is also a metaphor for life as it passes through the four elements, fire, heat, water, cooling, air, resting, and earth, shaping, to become an instrument of precision and beauty. Like the sword, we too must pass through the initiations of life, which test our metal in times of ad oh, in times of adversity. Two regal swans, symbolizing the element of light, stand proudly at protection's feet. Swans also symbolize love, as they are loyal creatures that frequently remain with the same mate for years. The light of the sun and the moon reflect, reflects the quality of yin and yang and transcends the alchemy of opposites. By drawing this card, you can feel blessed in the knowledge that protection is at hand. Trying to discern why this card has appeared today and observe its position within the spread, this will help define which areas are in need of awareness. Perhaps you've been feeling vulnerable or victimized by the world around you. If so, be mindful of your thinking as your thoughts can attract darkness as well as light. Your experience of life is a reflection of the quality of your thoughts, which drive decisions, actions, and consequences. Draw inspiration from the symbolism represented by the sword. The blade has the power to sever ties that bound you to toxic attachments, relationships, behaviors, or situations no longer serving your highest good. On a practical note, 
Keeping your immediate space organized, clutter-free, and clean is an effective way to protect your psychic energy. Be receptive to any guidance given during your meditations. Courage and strength are both virtues that help sustain through the uncharted waters of change and transition. As the universe lights your course, be open and ready to act on any clues. Wow, collective. I was getting star-like energy, which in the Aquarius card, it, it is protection. It's healing, too. So some of you might be going through some things. Um, but to know that you are protected, right? And remember, rejection is God's protection, too. Maybe you're protecting yourself. Maybe some of you have hermited yourself away to heal a broken heart and now you're at the end of that stage to where you're going out more, you're having fun, you're, you're, you're living life again, right? Because nobody wants to be miserable. And the most beautiful thing, Collective, about you beautiful, pure souls, you can't keep a good woman, a good man, a pure soul down for too long. You can hurt it. You can try to tear it apart and do all these nasty things to it. But lights bounce back because how we are on the inside always shines out. You can dampen that or you can throw like shade on that for a little bit. But the truth is what remains. You are what remains. So have faith in knowing that you're protected. And anything that might seem like unfair or um, immature or just really low down and dirty, don't even worry about it because this too shall pass. And it only shows um, what the noun, the person, place, or thing that's doing this to you, what, like, it only shows their character more. And you just remember that for the future because nobody wants to be around someone that's grumpy or doesn't know themselves or doesn't love themselves. So if you're falling on some hard times right now, just know you're protected. And with these two swans, as they said, swans pretty much mate for life. You have a soulmate that's watching out for you. Now, I don't know if this soulmate has come in. Let's see what this soulmate is for you, because I'm getting that strongly. What is this protection for the soulmate portion of its spirit for the collective? Aww. So what this is, is wish fulfillment. This is someone, um, okay, for some of you, this is actually you diving into yourself and becoming your best friend because you've dived into the depths of your soul, your subconscious, to make these emotional wishes come true for you. And through that, you voiced it through your voice and you figured out what you want and need, right? Uh, that's actually for all of you, but for some of you, it, it ventures off more and it shows that you have a soulmate that's coming in in the ways that you want. This could be love. This could be friends. This could be family. This could be business. This could be social. Soulmates don't have to be a lover. They can be, but they don't have to be. They can be a brother. They can be a sister. They can be a friend. It is someone that you have a soul attachment with and you have some high up some high energy beings up there. I don't know if it's fully your ancestors. I know they're there, but there's another energy that's coming through that's like, nah, I got this for you, boo. I got this for you, right? Like, I'm going to help you. So it's somebody coming through. I don't know if they're going to materialize soon, but you have someone that wants to come through. And you have a lot of protection from up above, guys. It's because you know yourself. It's because... You know, people want to um, sometimes throw negative shit our way, throw karma our way, but it's like all you're doing is throwing it back at yourself because God doesn't like people that work from the seven deadly sins. If you come at a pure one, expect that in kind. And they may not see it outwardly. Like the, maybe their finances aren't being affected. Maybe they still live in the house that they live in. Maybe they still drive the cars that they drive. Maybe things look really great from the outside. But know this, on the inside, their life is a mess. They feel like shit. Their soul bothers them so much that they can't even stand to look at you because you're a reminder of 
the failure to themselves. Because when you come after a light for no reason other than you're more miserable, like, because there's no reason to come after a light. We're lights. Like, what? No. We're lights. We are not malicious. We spread love. It's like, what I'm getting at, it, it's, it's like um, a dark empath. And some of you may have dealt with this. It doesn't have to be lovers, but this can be family, friends, social. It can be a lover. It can be a husband. It can be a wife. It can be a girlfriend. It can be a boyfriend. It can be a partner. It can be all of these things, right? But it's something, it's like a lot of you dealt with people that were just unsettled within themselves. And they see you as a light and they want to attach themselves to that. But they put on a mask. And then, like, their mask falls off while yours doesn't even show because you don't have one. You are who you are. You're transparent. And so people get upset at that. Like, why can't I bring this person down to my level? Why can't I make them be mean and be cruel? And, you know, they get upset at themselves because they don't know how to um, deal with a light. When most of them, let's be real, they need to really get down on their knees and be like kissing our feet. Because like, yeah. But what this is showing is that you've been through a lot, especially some of you that something recent and someone um, or people might think that they have you by the whatever. But you don't care because it's like up, up and away. I'm moving on still. And all that happens is when someone attacks the light, God watches. And little things start, you'll see, their lives will start to fall apart because the inner tur turmoil. They must hate themselves even more than they already do, but we must show compassion. But they must, because, I mean, how could you do things to people like that and not feel bad? That's probably why they drink, drug, and sex themselves to sleep. I don't know. That's not my life or lifestyle, and it's not yours. But I'm here to say, through spirit, that you're protected. You are the light. You have a soulmate and you have energetic beings that are protecting you around and you have a soulmate that's coming in, someone that's going to come in to help you in the ways that you want and need. You know, there is a pesky energy that I sense around you that's a past energy um, that wants to come in, but they haven't changed. They are still the same old humdrum, boring and negative self. Everything is always someone else's fault. Nothing is ever theirs. It's very immature and gross. Um, and that's why it's like on the outskirts because I'm not allowing that in this circle. But I'm here to let you know that it's around. So just be careful of that. It's, it's just a pesky rodent. That actually doesn't have to be a rodent. They choose to be a rodent. And, you know, I see it all too often. People choose to not measure up. And then they blame the person or people that do measure up. So have fun. Live and let live. And know that whatever you're going through right now, spirit's got your back. And it may look like dim and drismal right now. But this will pass too. And remember, we forgive, but we don't forget, right? Because we don't we, we don't care how much time has passed. Know it. So when you approach it or when you see it or when you've come in contact with it, you will understand the energy that you're dealing with, whether it is this person or a new person. It's like the same energy in a new face. Not today, papa. Not today, mama. People get upset when we put up boundaries. But really, the only types of people that get upset with boundaries are the ones that want to cross your boundaries. No, thank you. That's indicative, indicative of itself. Um, poor me's, victim mode, oh, woe is me. People that always blame but never look at what they did. It, it's just nonsense. And you're, you're protected from all of this. And you have, let's see, let's see what's coming in for you. You know why you're protected from all of this? Because of what I just read and said, yes. But because you have always shown gratitude for everything that you've been through, for everything that you've earned and deserved, you've shown gratitude. It's like I'm talking to people that chose to 
love themselves more than they loved like a, a noun, person, place, or thing, right? Something like that. And it's like you were maybe being punished for choosing yourself because you didn't want to live in toxic or negative. You wasn't, you were not going to um, deal with anything that made you not have mental peace. Your inner peace is more important. And it's like, People try to punish you for that. Gosh forbid you not live in negative. Gosh forbid. It's like people that want to fall in love and be in love with life. But really, they're running away from themselves and attaching themselves to a life. But they have no, um, they don't even know how to change. They're all constantly in victim mode. They're, huh, you know, it's just like, ew, it's weakness is what it is. And we need to have compassion for that because we were all there once. And anyone who says that they weren't, I don't know if I would believe you because in order to not be there, you have to, for, right? Like we're born pure and innocent, but life happens. And so we, you know, things pile up over time and things manifest differently. And so we do work out of fear. Fear is weakness. But once we realize there's nothing to fear but fear itself, it's like a game changer. And nobody will know you as well as you know yourself. So don't allow anyone to think that they like can own you. Sometimes when we get into relationships, friendships, lovers, partnerships, however, even family ships, people think because you're genuine and kind and you're easygoing and fun loving that, that you are just going to always be there and take abuse. No, no. We all have our own trauma and we're all responsible for not only knowing it, but to heal it. That's not up to anyone else. Sometimes people search for love because they don't love themselves enough. They think, oh, I'm in love. That's what makes me happy. But you need to know to be happy in yourself, be independent. It's the difference between codependency and independency, right? Codependence and independence. So if you have people that you loved and cared about, whether it's friends, family, social, lovers, whatever, right, friends, and they don't want to talk to you anymore because of you can't understand why, that's an indication that they don't love themselves enough. They're upset that you move with such grace, dignity, and beauty, and they can't either measure up or like, it's like, the, I don't even know if it's so much so they can't measure up. It's more so they're so bored and with their own lives and unhappy. They have to step outside their own lives to like point the finger at someone else's life, which I don't understand because if you just took that finger and pointed it back at yourself, I bet there'd be a ton of things you could take a look at. But hey, distraction like seems easier for these types. So it's just, it's clear indications that these aren't the types of people we want around us. People that are just miserable, but put on fake smiles. No, thank you. We're all set with that. females for those of you that um let's face it when um now masculine men i'm i will be speaking to you in a minute but i'm speaking more to the females right now right and you could be female in the body of a female or you could identify as a female however this is for you women however you identify if you identify as a woman that's what i'm talking to if you are a woman that's what i'm talking to i, I it's because what I have to say, it's like when you're a woman, right, whether you identify that or you're born that way, whether you're a cis woman, however, right, um, we want to be our feminine selves. We don't want to have to pull out our masculine energy and be hard. We don't want that. But life happens. And when you're independent and things have happened, you, you have to have a good balance of your masculine energy right to a certain point i have come to the conclusion that no you fucking don't i am going to be in my divinity my femininity from here on out and if i feel that i need to assert myself in such ways that my masculine energy comes out more around that person or people i don't want them near me because that means i'm on edge around them that and i know myself well enough to know that I'm a balanced, grounded, high vibrational person with love, compassion, kind, all these things, right? So we don't let others disrupt our soul. If we can't be who we are, or if we don't, then you need to move those people out of the way or get them out of your circle. Because if we need to feel safe no matter where we are, 
and when you're around others where you can that's a tribe and everyone will stick up for everyone else so it's like stick with your people and find your tribe and you can and men for those men now whether you um identify as a man or you were born a man right however there's times you don't want to be in your masculinity you want to kind of let your fem like you know an easygoing nature more feminine side might come out well you need to feel safe to do that right so you find your tribe you find a partner friends family like we make our family we find those people to be able to feel our like we're always our genuine authentic selves right it's just sometimes we have to put up guards and defenses because the world can be cruel and, and there's people that hide in plain sight. Use your energetic, use your energy reading skills, use your discernment, use your past experiences. If someone's reminding you of someone else and that person that they're reminding you of either was, you either liked them or you didn't and there's reasons why, that these are all things to think about when we're, when we're meeting new people. Red flags, do not, if you're getting pinged on a red flag, trust it because your body wouldn't tell you that for nothing it's a warning sign unless it's like an old story playing in your head but you know yourself best right so i guess it's like be around people where you can feel like this around instead of like this nobody wants to you know and let all the hoes and the bros that are thinking and being low and the skanks and the troublemakers and the people that don't love themselves, let them all be that way away from you. You don't even need to pay it any mind. People that have betrayed you, friends that have betrayed you, partners that have betrayed you, let them be how they're going to be because it has no effect on you and it has no effect on me because we live and let live and keep going and know this. I'm hearing right now, you are the one that got away. People don't want to act right, and then they want to play victim. I'm not sure. And this is not just lover specific. This is friends, family. This is could be lover, but it's everything combined. People are how they're going to be or how they're going to be. People don't like it when you know yourself. People don't like it when you work your way out of trauma, when you heal yourself. Because why? Oh, that's right. Because you either force people to grow, to be next to you, or you get rid of them. Why? It's self-preservation and it is for forward movement who wants to be around someone that's humdrum complaining all the time selfish greedy and gives no care or thought to anything that they do outside of themselves oh this is good enough for that person like who the fuck are you <laughs> right like see you later bye yeah people are fucked Okay, but you have a lot of protection, and I do believe it's because of the gratitude. Let's dive in to see, though, and then I'll dive more in with the tarot. We'll see. Gratitude. This image portrays a winged deva, deva poised behind a pink rose. A golden crown hovers above her head in the language of flowers. Pink roses are symbolic of joy and gratitude, a virtue that belongs in the realm of sacred emotion and sovereign status. We were just talking about this. It has been clinically proven that a thankful life is generally a happier life. And it's easy to forget we often receive a great deal more than we give. The gratitude card invites you to unearth the bounty of your daily life by remembering the many reasons to be grateful. It may be favorable to express thanks to a deserving soul who has helped you in some way. Or simply as a signal to count your blessings. The continued practice of this alchem alchemy virtue, al alchemical virtue, can animate forgiveness, heal the past, and bring about daily sense of wonderment and peace. From a cosmic perspective, to become unconditionally grateful for the adventure of life with all its ups and downs and regardless of outcomes, is to merge along with the kingdom of God. This also can bring about, be grateful. So even if people have hurt you, betrayed you, treated you like you were absolutely nothing and just thought they could do whatever they want and you wouldn't know or because you wouldn't know, but you do know. 
um, that people that just play you for a fool, dog you out, think it's funny, think they're all, you're always going to be there. And then when you're not, they're over crying in the corner. Why me? Poor me. You know, like that little kid at the um, playground when we're young that like hits people with the dodgeballs and then gets hit back once and cries and then go pouts and wants people to chase after them. Like, what's wrong? What's wrong? But, but really forgot that they were just so fucking mean and cruel to begin with that it really was just karma. Those types, we got to have compassion for them. And we should, we need to be grateful for the lessons that they gave us because those lessons turned into blessings. I will tell you this, past relationships have taught me, especially one in particular, taught me the things that I needed to know to heal. I needed to know, I, I needed to heal things I saw firsthand the things I needed to heal in myself to be complete because of, you know, the ways that people treated me, the ways relationships went, the ways I was treated from, you know, past partners. Not all, but a good portion of them, um, especially one in particular, you know, uh, and when we heal those things inside of ourselves, we then, you know, that, that we need to be grateful for that. We need to love them for that because Maybe, just maybe, we wouldn't have healed those things had we not been faced with it right right there, mirroring it back to us. We made a choice. So you need to be grateful to yourself also because you chose to do the inner work. Instead of crying and yelling and screaming and blaming everyone else, you chose to, behind closed doors, cry your eyes out, ask all these questions, go to therapy, really look at, you know, all these different things and you became a stronger person for it. And so, you know, we need to be grateful that we were able to do that. Be grateful to this person. Be grateful to these people. Be grateful for the situation because without it, maybe you wouldn't have grown. Maybe you would have, right? Like, who am I to say? I'm not saying it, meaning it like that. I just mean like, be grateful because it could have been worse and it could, right? And you didn't want to live like that anyway. And so that's your soul reaching out and saying, wait, hold up. I've had enough. Wake the fuck up. It's what it's saying to us. And then we wake up and we fix what's wrong. And then those caliber of people can't touch us anymore. And that's what they really get upset about. You know, that and the self-loathing and the self-hate. They don't know what to do with themselves because you didn't treat them anything close to how they treated you. And so they can't really face you. That's just what it is. They just can't. They're unable because they're weak. And that's okay. Um, we all were weak once. We were weak when we were putting up with abuse, mental, physical, emotional, psychological, sexual, however, right? Like as adults, when we were um, putting up with, not to say that people put up with sexual abuse or physical abuse, not that we put up with it. Sometimes we don't know it, right? Like I, I just wanted to make that like clear because I don't want any want to think that I'm saying anything like I'm not victim shaming it or anything like that. It's like, we don't know until we know until we wake up and say, no, enough is enough. And I'm taking a stand, right? I don't give a fuck how your past was. I don't give a fuck how much trauma you've been through because you know what? I've been through it too. And you don't see me acting like a little bitch, a little like rich kid with like bored with a silver spoon doesn't have a soul but was told their whole life that they're awesome and they're so kind when really they're manipulative fucks that just can't get it together you know or kids that were raised with no parents and they just became hard it takes a while to you know it just however you fall on the spectrum 33 33 on the clock all right, let's dive in. Spirit, show me what you mean for the collective, for the gratitude. Oh, have gratitude because you are just. Look, the mother of swords, you are righteous, not self-righteous. You are honorable. You speak the truth. You are the truth. You are justice. Have gratitude for creating your own justice. However the outcome, maybe you became homeless. Maybe you became carless. Maybe you lost a lot during a breakup, a divorce, right? That's okay. Those are all things. Now, I'm not saying that like losing a house or losing a car or losing a family isn't hard or bad. That's not what I mean. It's painful. 
but is it bad or is it just painful? You know, um, you've got to look at the source too, because sometimes, you know, we can't expect from people things that they're not. If somebody's a cruel person, they're a cruel person. They can make every excuse in the world about it. It doesn't matter. And the only people that really agree with them are people that are like them or their family, because like, it's just the way it is, you know? I mean, you speak the truth and that bothers people. Have gratitude for yourself for no matter what the fuck happened to you in life, how fucking low you fell, how far you fell, however many times you got back up every time and you went up every fucking time. And maybe this was the last time. Maybe this was the time where it was like, no, enough's enough and this will never happen to me again. And so have gratitude for yourself. Have gratitude for your pure spirit that... Everyone does love. The only ones that don't love it are haters. And really, haters are just low-key fans. Because like I said before, Collective, people either want to be with you or be you, period. That's just how it is. And it has nothing to do with what you have tangibly or materialistically. All that shit, that's um, very superficial. No, it's because of the light that you have inside, right? It's because of the optimism. It's because of like how you are. Of course, people want to attach themselves to that. And what's done in the dark always comes to light. And just keep letting your light shine. And you'll find your soul tribe. You'll find your family because birds of a feather flock together. And you are the five people you hang out with. Think about that. Somebody said that to me this week. And, you know, for the first time, well, it wasn't the first time someone said that to me, but for the first time in a very long time, I could actually say, and it be true, right? Like that if I am the five people I hang out with, I'm doing pretty well because I have really great soul tribe, people of higher consciousness. Now, it took me many years to, to find them, believe me. But now I'm not letting go. And that's what I have for you for now, Collective. Let's end this read with a um, wisdom with a wisdom card. This is more of a Wiccan deck, but I like that it's gilded. These these two decks, um, I had um, a, a reader and I had bartered. And so it was a beautiful exchange. And I mean, I just love these decks. She had so many and these two really spoke to me. Let's get into it though. Spirit, show me what the show me what we're going to um what do we what does the collective need to see Wisdom House of the Night to end this reading for the collective spirit? Show me. Wow. Chaos at the bottom. Well, this sort of goes hand in hand with protection and gratitude, if we think about it. Because at the bottom was gratitude, and then we had protection. So at the bottom here is chaos. So perhaps have gratitude that you're not in chaos anymore. Be grateful for that. Another thing to be grateful for, if you can't find things to be grateful for, don't take a shower for a day or two and... Or, or take a cold shower for a day or two, and then when you turn the hot shower on, be grateful you have water. Sleep on the floor for a night or two so that you can be grateful for having a bed. Things like that, right? So we have hope, high, priest, high priestess of earth, and then chaos at the bottom. So there's a lot of changes coming. There's something that's coming full circle, and it may have dragged out and taken a long time, but this is a very, this is the precipice. This is the crucial point. This really makes or breaks how um, a lot of things for you. I'm think I'm seeing a lot of things, and it's like... We forgive to forgive ourselves, but we don't forget. And sometimes people can think, well, if they're not going to do what I want, then I'm just going to do all these crazy and horrible and cruel things. Then they laugh about it later. Like, imagine, like, laughing at someone if, like, they, like, I've seen this happen where, like, people have, like, 
like the real victims don't speak up. And then the, the, the abusers will call the police on them and have them kicked. I saw this with a friend, have her kicked out of her own house and like took her kids. Like, you know, the truth eventually came out, but it took many months. And now I, then I also uh, knew someone where, you know, just a bunch of stories like that, like a mother, a single mom that was getting, you know, two businesses up on her own, middle of a divorce. Her husband um, decided to just file for divorce for, you know, after they had made agreement, all these things. So she was starting from nothing. And because she didn't want to go back to corporate or her other field of nursing or whatever it was, um, she chose to follow her dreams. She had two businesses. And then um, she got her apartment for her and her son, or, her, well, her child. And um, she, you know, they had made an agreement and she needed the car for an extra, the car that the husband bought her, that he then took back, you know. Um, and she didn't find it in the divorce, but she needed it for an, an extra month more, and, uh, 45 days. And he was so cruel, he didn't do it. And all that does is just show the type of person that she was dealing with. And so she figured it out because she knew she couldn't depend on that person. The person was never reliable, but she was grateful for the experience. She was grateful that she got to see true colors. Really, you want to see someone's true colors? Pay attention to how they act when they don't get what they want. Yeah. But there's, you know... We forgive to forgive ourselves, right? But we don't forget. It's something like that. All right. But we have hope and high priestess. And I want to read these from the book because I'm not, I'm still getting used to these. A lot of nines, a lot of things coming to an end. This is also spirit talking to me too, because we have three, six, nine, which are numbers that I personally, so threes, nines, nine sixes so there's a lot there's balance coming in um collabing working with others and um yeah and endings it is sad spirits just like isn't it sad when people are cruel to people just to be cruel because they're miserable and they don't want to take a look at themselves and i'm like it is sad spirit it is sad but there's nothing we can do about it we can't dwell about it we can just keep moving forward you take that energy and use it to drive yourself in other ways that's all all right we can't rely on those that live in the dark we can't rely on weak people they're weak and they know it the blame game here let's be mad because you don't want to be in toxic or negative anymore yikes all right we have hope when you choose the symbol of hope know that no matter what temporary setbacks there may be in your life now light will return again when the moon is hidden in the darkest forest it is hard to see your next step and it is easy to give in to the fear that there will never be safety or light again. I am here to guide you when you have lost your way, whispering to you to maintain faith that good things will come your way once more. Take one step toward your dream. I will take two steps toward you to help you achieve it. Have hope and only good things will come of it. Aww. High Priestess of Earth, number three. When you choose the symbol of the High Priestess of Earth, I minx the goddess of night. I minx the goddess of night and I minx the goddess of night am judging you to take care of your health and your beautiful body. The vampire high priestess of earth symbolizes all things in the physical world, your body, the body of earth, and the things you surround yourself with. Now is the time to eat well, get rest, and connect to the power of earth by walking barefoot. Be mindful knowing you are a child of flesh and bone who came alive through the blending of earth magic, magic with a CK, in the light, and your spirit. If your question is about a situation with a friend or love interest, know that the high priestess of earth is asking you to wait until you see tangible evidence of what you seek to understand about this relationship. Perhaps a first kiss or some shared activity will give you more insight into your question. Stay grounded. Wait and see. Wow. 
That's very lovely. And then why, but why for chaos at the overall? Let's read that. Because there might, because I feel like some of you are surrounded by it. A storm is brewing and misunderstandings are all too common as chaos swirls around your life right now. Maybe a lot of people have a lot to say about your life, right? But these people don't know shit because they're not around you. They just say what they think. They just make shit up. But if you look, you're really right here. You're in this light right here. And the storm's all around you. But it really can't touch you. My child, you have nothing to fear. I am here to remind you that after a storm, the air is cleared and life will begin again even better than before. The silly thing is, if you refuse to take shelter, you will get soaked and you may have to repair a lot of damage. If you created the chaos, you will have to clean it up. But if others are the cause, you must step out of it and wait out the storm. You will be glad you did. A good thing to say to yourself is no drama. Exactly. Look. You can't allow others. Okay. Inner peace is freedom. So letting someone let people think what they want. Let them do what they want. It's like all they're doing is digging their grave more because they're very short sighted and they don't see further than the immediate future. Oh, if I can't have it now, forget it. Instant gratification. If I can't treat this person like shit and still have them, fuck them. Oh, how dare they? How dare they break my heart? How dare they say all these things about me when in reality it's a repercussion of their own actions and behaviors? They broke their own heart when they broke yours. They disrespected themselves when they disrespected you. They showed their true colors when they abused and betrayed you, right? And then people want forgiveness. Well, you forgive just fine. Doesn't mean you're going to forget. Why would you want to allow someone back in your life that hasn't changed? Male, female, friend, family, doesn't matter. Lover, whatever, right? Why? Business. Who wants that? And people can lie. And they're just going to lie themselves. It's it's disgusting. And it's it's like it it... it it's bothersome to the soul. It irks you like, ew. It, it changes the view of someone, how they look. You just don't view them the same because you can, you saw, I saw what you are. I see what you are. Everyone does too, by the way. People do see it. They just don't respect these people enough to even say it. They're just like, no, I see you a mile away. See you later. Bye. They're very superficial with them. Unless they want something from them, then they're all buttery up, nicey, nicey, you know, all these things. But that's not your lesson. Oh, you, you know, and don't wait for anyone. People get upset when you change yourself to become the better version of yourself. They don't, some people don't want that because that means that you're going to leave them behind because they don't want to grow. Why can't he or she just meet me at my level in this shit level of sex, drugs, rock and roll or whatever, right? Like, yikes. And... You don't die with money. You can't bury yourself with money. Like, you don't die with it. That's materialistic. Money is used to, you know, it can help you get things in life to, to help you grow. But people that are materialistic and, you know, eventually they, they fall. May not be, maybe today, maybe tomorrow, next year, the year after. I don't know, guys. I really don't. But they always end up falling. Because when you do good, you get good, right? When you do bad, you get bad. So it's like, be careful who you let back in your life. Because if, you know, what, if they haven't changed, they're bringing all their fucking karma with them. They're chaos. So let people talk shit. Let people think they got one over on you. Like, let people have hand-me-downs. Like, secondhand. Like, okay. Let them, let them, let them. Then what? Okay, cool. Like, for real. Like, let sleeping dogs lie. I guess that's the moral of it today. Right? Let's see. Yeah. Yeah, start over. Okay, so for some of you, this is uh, this is gearing towards love right now. I didn't know that I was doing this, but I guess we are. Someone's feeling abandoned, left out in the cold. They're waiting for you to come to them. 
um, but they're in like, whether they're male or female, they are in immature feminine energy. So if this is a male, they are in poor me, I'm a baby, uh, uh, you're not going to do this, I'm going to do that, uh, uh, uh. you should be coming over to me, like they're so important. If this is a female, it's the same way, but you are the truth. Mother of Swords or the Ace of Swords, they love you. They want to be with you. They just can't measure up. And that's this communication coming. It's not that they can't measure up. It's that they don't know how to be mature. And they quit everything that they do because it's too hard. Because they don't know real life. They don't know how real life works. Aw. Yeah, there's justice for that coming. And judgment. Look. Look. TikTok, yeah, justice and judgment. Something about legalities, too, because we have the actual Libra card here that represents justice, um, but we also have the Mother of Swords, which also rep can represent of justice, and also the Ace of Swords, which is spirit saying clarity coming, the truth will be seen for all. And then we have justice and judgment. So somebody can maybe, it's, tell you, yeah. You don't have to, re I don't know, I'm feeling drawn to say this. You don't have to return things the way that a person says that you have to. <laughs> you don't. You can do what you want because you're your own person and then let them know where to pick it up. Well, we shall see. All right. Somebody's having nightmares. Um, not you guys, someone from your past is having absolute nightmares because they're trying to come out of toxicity, but they still, if this is, I'm going to get rid of this energy. It's disgusting. This is like lowly and just, oh my gosh, I feel so sorry. I feel, uh, you know, they don't know how to, um, yeah, we're going to just going to stop that. I've said enough. Like, I don't want to bring that energy in. Just know that you are the Nine of Pentacles. You created, you started with one thing on your own because you didn't have anyone. You may have had someone you thought you could depend on, be reliable, but they just dragged you down. What's indicative, what shows that is how much you fucking rose when you were on your own by yourself. Some of you were parents. And you still held shit down. Created a new life for your fucking family and yourself. Fuck anyone else who says different or fuck anyone else who tries to come into that. Fuck them. Where were the fuck were they? Nah. You built every single one of these on your fucking own. And now you're sitting pretty? And now people want to come in? Well, they can, right? It's But they need to approach you respectfully. If they don't want to do that, then that's on them. Like, you're going places in life. They just wish they could be there. A lot of them just want to, like, be next to you because, like, you, they want you to shine for them. They, like, get, like, you have a lot of clout and you don't even realize that you have a lot of clout. It's because of how positive and optimistic you are and beautiful inside and out. You're beautiful on the outside, but you're even more so beautiful. Bring it in when your soul shines through. What? Hala. Yeah. Yep. All right. Brand new beginning coming. What else? Wow. Some kind of brand new endeavor that's going to be fair and just. It's going to be like whatever you went through before or whatever you're going through now. Like, I know it sucks, guys. I really do. Right? But that has to close out and be all done with because then you're starting something over in a new way with somewhere else. You're getting justice from it for everything. Your spirit is telling me that. And yeah. Oh, the star car. Heal and let go. And then you bump out. Bam. Star-like energy. Let people be seen for who and what they are. That's, you know, just like we let people see us for who and what we are. And that's what I got for you guys today. Hit that like button, comment, share, subscribe. Let me know if you like the way that I did this read today. All right, and I'll be doing Taurus next. Happy birthday, guys. Bye. Happy birthday, Taurus.